Okay, can you please welcome to the stage your second act of this section is Carwin Blaney! Hello, hello. Yeah, my name's Carwin, and uh, I'm from Carmarthen, which is the oldest town in Wales. Yes, yeah, brilliant. We just had the grand opening of our blockbuster video. <laughs> ah, it's lovely. It's a small town. It's one of these places where you can get baptised and a tattoo by the same person. <laughs> yeah, Carmarthen's full of characters like that, but that word's got a bit of a broad meaning, doesn't it? Character. Like if someone says, oh, he's a bit of a character, you don't know if they're talking about... The small boy running around in his pants. Oh, he's a bit of a character. <laughs> or the sports teacher who's chasing after him. <laughs> and I love it when nicknames stick, not because they make much sense, but just because they're fun to say. Like, there was a girl in my year, her dad was a vicar, and her mum worked in a gym. And to this day, we still call her Jehovah's Fitness. <laughs> Last week was pretty exciting for me because I reckon I got to meet the worst human being in the world. Uh, his name was Hugh, and he's seven years old. See, I was working in this primary school, and I got the whole class to pair up and draw portraits of each other. But he asked if he could draw a picture of me instead. And naively I said, yeah, go on then. At which point he turns his paper from portrait to landscape. <laughs> I was like, uh, why did you do that? And he goes, well, how else am I going to fit your nose in? <laughs> and after he said that, the teacher turned to me and went, oh, Hugh, <laughs> such a bright kid. <laughs> he wasn't. Lunchtime, I heard him explaining to another boy how the moon is the back of the sun. <laughs> that kid's got no hope. I was never all that confident when I was in primary school, but I did get some periods of confidence. In high school, though, like uh, for a while in year seven, I was often called the hottest boy on the whole school bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, that bus driver's in prison now. Yeah. Uh, turns out he was a bit of a character, you know. <laughs> The school nurse used to tell me that I had a cracking body. Well, the medical term was eczema, but... <laughs> I gave her my own spin. Lots of things uh, changed because of COVID, uh, but for me, one thing that didn't change was the shop uh, CEX or Kex. You know the second-hand DVD place? Yeah. Because even before the pandemic, I made sure I wore a mask before going into there. <laughs> That place is incredible. Before going into CEX for the first time, I didn't even realize that acne had a smell. <laughs> it's amazing. You can go in there with 90p and come out with two copies of Evan Almighty and 50 new spots on your face. <laughs> I still wear a mask in there now just to lessen the risk of catching virginity. I just, I couldn't believe though how much schools have changed. See, I grew up in the 90s, so it was just before mobile phones and social media, and in some parts of Wales, cars. <laughs> and back then, even the friendly activities ended up in a trip to A&E. Like, who here remembers the game British Bulldogs? <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous that that many of us survived. For anyone who isn't familiar with British Bulldogs, I think the way to sum it up is, you heard of um, World War I? <laughs> yeah, well, that was safer than a round of British Bulldogs. Especially in the deep countryside of rugby-obsessed Wales, in a school where even the geekiest girl in your year drinks raw, unpasteurized milk, <laughs> and hits six foot four while there were still stabilizers on her bike. Believe me, when she hit you in British Bulldogs, she hit you hard. It, it kind of gave you the feeling that she didn't like being called Jehovah's Fitness. <laughs> yeah. Last month was, uh, was pretty crap for me. Uh, and have you ever had a really shit month? And you get to the end of it and you think, oh, thank God that's behind me. But then your phone, without prompting, decides to make you a montage. <laughs> 
of photos from your horrendous month. You're given two minutes of photos, caked in anxiety, all set to the happiest, bounciest music you've ever heard in your life. It gently fades from a photo of the bike lock that used to be attached to your bike. 